The year is 2013. Doge meme was born, Obama gets inaugurated for his second term presidency, a meteor explodes in Chelyabinsk, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One gets released, also Wine gets released, which is pretty much the grandfather of TikTok, The Wolf of Wall Street premiered, and all of these bangers drop. I came in And also this... What does the fuck say? Nah, I'm just kidding. But yeah, also, Harlem Shake was a thing. Motherfuckers just like this. Oh, and also, I guess I dressed like that is all. But most importantly, after summer was pretty much over, everyone started getting back into their old boring routine until out of nowhere, our beloved game CSGO get a huge update. They changed the world forever. Okay, let's go. The Arms Deals update, which introduced over 100 beautiful, well, mainly dog shit, but still over 100 different skins for many different guns that you could get in after game drops, or you know, they had to introduce cases, which were holy fuck, it was actually shit ton of cases they released in the span of four months. Anyways, this video is about the best possible loadout you could have had in 2013 and it's not particularly price-wise, well some skins might be, but also looks-wise which made everyone go wow and also, you know, how common the skin was back then as well. Um, also, you might be asking, who the fuck are you and how can you say shit about 2013 CSGO? You were probably not even born then. Well, look here, Mr. Redditor. I'm certified with this goddamn silver payback coin, okay? I bet none of you watching this video have it. And if that's not enough, here's my first CSGO video of my old channel back in 2013. But yeah, anyways, let's get back into the video. Starting off, we have Star Trek USPS Dark Water here. Every single USP out in 2013 had that DDPUT camo on them. So, out of Overgrowth and Serum, I think this was the best one and most people had it. Then we have Star Trek P2000 Ocean Foam. In early days of CSGO, the P2000 never had good skins. Uh, so, this was probably the biggest flex you could have had. Um, moving on, we have Star Trek Desert Eagle Golden Koi. You might be saying, oh, but the Blaze, you know, the Blaze. No, trust me, the Blaze was worthless back then and it didn't have the hype that it has now. So, yeah, Golden Koi was the big thing. Then we have Star Trek Dual Berettas Marina. Probably the first interesting looking Dual Berettas they released and they actually have lots of different patterns. So, to this day, it's kind of an underrated skin, not gonna lie. And then we have Star Trek 57K's Hardened. Pretty obvious pick, I would say. Most of the 5.7s back in 2013 were really bland and boring looking. And the case hardened had a lot of interesting patterns and people back then didn't have a set price for you know Specific patterns like the full blue when you can see on the screen right now So yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty interesting time and then moving on to the Glock What do you think who's gonna win is it gonna be the fade or is it gonna be the dragon tier 2? Well, let me break it to you. It's it's the Star Trek Glock 18 dragon Tier 2. Yeah, 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 look, okay Fade wasn't cool back in the day, okay? Even I sold it for 6 euros first day I got it. Dragon Tattoo had stat track and at the same time was harder to get, you know, it, pretty simple, simple maths, you know? Alright, anyways, then we get P250 Nuclear Threat and holy shit, finally a break from all these case skins and stat tracks. Um, this was actually a really sick skin back then and I guess now too since it's kinda rare. And uh, no, the Modern Hunter can go fuck itself because no, that, that skin sucks and it will never be good and it was, wasn't was good then, nobody used it, fuck that skin. <laughs> Alright, um, then moving on we got Tank 9 Nuclear Threat. Just like the P250, this was easily the coolest Tank 9 back then too. And even though it wasn't too expensive, it was still the best looking one and yeah, a lot of people had it. Anyways, let's move on to SMGs. Where's Revolver and CZ man? I'll be about the SMGs. Star Trek Mac 10, Graven, pretty easy pick. There were no good Mac 10 skins back then, and this one actually looks really, really good in high shaders. I never realized how good it was. Then we have Star Trek MP7 Skulls, easy pick again. Everyone had these the rich, the poor, everyone, everyone. And trust me, nobody cared about the whiteout. Just trust me, okay? 
Um, then we have Star Trek MP9 Rose Iron. This MP9 has amazing art to this day, and some of you might say Bulldozer and Hot Rod, but nah, they were both worthless back then. And, and, and remember, Star Trek, okay? Everyone cared about goddamn Star Trek, including me. Then we have Star Trek PP Bison Cobalt Half Tone. Not many people used this gun overall, so it was kind of hard to tell which was the most used slash coolest one back then. But I would say the Cobalt Halftone will take it since it was the first Baby Bison to come out with Star Trek, which I remember myself getting hyped about as well. I was like, holy shit, dude, finally Star Trek PP Bison, about time. And then we have Star Trek P90 Dead by Kitty. Look, you can argue that the Emerald Dragon was better, but whenever you saw someone with a Star Trek one of these, you would assume he's some Dubai prince and people would drop their goddamn rifles just to pick this shit up. Um, so no doubt the the kitty takes this one because it is just cooler, okay? And last SMG we have is UMP45 Blaze! Back then there was a shortage of UMPs so the rich had this even though it was cheap and the poor had the caramel so yeah, I mean, simpler times, you know, simpler times. Now it's heavy time. Max 7 Bulldozer, I mean in factory you knew this was a pretty pretty big flex back then as well and easily the cleanest best looking Max 7 in 2013. Uh, moving on we got Star Trek Nova Graphite. I could give the spot to Blaze Orange too but I didn't see that many people with the skin in game so I gotta give it to the gold old clean graphite. Uh, Valve really loved adding Nova skins by the way, they, they, they add way too many of those. Uh, moving on we get Star Trek Sawed Off Orange Didi Pad. I could have put the Kraken here, but I never saw anyone use it, even the rich. I feel like the skin got completely ghosted till this day, so I gotta give it to the orange DD pad. It, it, it actually looks really good. I forgot about the skin and I actually really, really like this skin. Then we have XM1014 Fallout Warning. Valve really released multiple sawed offs and Novas and left out XM without a single Star Trek in 2013. Shameless! Absolutely shameless! It was my favorite shoddy, but I guess Fallout Warning was popular then, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, everyone had this skin and there was no Star Trek, so I mean, yeah, sad. Uh, then we have Star Trek M249 Magma. Uh, yeah, this gun was pretty abandoned by Valve, so this is uh, this is what we got. It is what it is, you know? And for the last heavy, we have Negev Anodized Navy. This was the only good option for the Negev in 2013. The simple ass, ugly ass skin. Yes, everyone had it and everyone was happy with it, I guess. And lastly, we got the rifles. Starting off with the Star Trek AK-47 Fire Serpent. Yes, the case hardened was released before and the blue ones were kind of cheap, but no one really valued them more than the regular case hardens. so this being a red skin was the thing that made everyone go crazy. Trust me, this was a pretty pretty big thing back then and actually it's kind of even bigger right now because of all the people doing the trade-ups for it and back to you being so rare. Anyways, moving on, we get Star Trek Aug Wings. Everyone and their mothers had this goddamn skin, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Uh, then we got Star Trek Op Lightning Strike. Ah, uh, the good old times before Valve released red skins for drop collections too. Uh, this was the rarest and the coolest op in game. Simple. Then we got Thomas Spitfire. Absolute dog shit skin. But people started picking up on the after images only in early 2014. So that's why I have to put this one in here over, over the after image. So yeah. Then we have Star Trek G3 SG-1 Azure Zebra. Nobody even used this gun in games, so again, I don't know what the most common was, but this was definitely the, the best one, so yeah, we'll just stick with this one. Then we get Star Trek Galil AR Orange DD Pant. A lot of Galil skins were released, but nothing could be the wonderful contrast between black and orange, and that's why lots of people had these, and that's why I love this skin, and I actually kind of want to pick up on these skins. The orange DD Pants are really, really lovely. Then we have the Star Trek M4A1S Dark water some other m4a1s's were dropped but when you think of 2013 this is definitely the skin for the year it's just yeah i mean yeah then we have star trek m4a4 asimov the hype around this you can't even imagine like literally people were screaming asimov asimov man drop please just like they're screaming dragon lore man dragon lore uh you know when dragon lore dropped as well um but this is forever to be a legendary skin in csgo and i mean it was released in 2013 and there's no way anything was better than that, so I have to put it here. Moving on, we got Star Trek Scar 20 Crimson Web. 
Um, yeah, everyone had it. Then we have Star Trek SG-553 Ultraviolet. This is actually a really nice and clean skin till this day. Back then it was boring because everyone had it and overall... Yeah, I guess it's a pretty clean, nice skin. Can't say much about it. And lastly for the rifles, we got Star Trek SSG-08 Blood in the Water. I feel like if it wasn't for the filler trade-up items, the SSG would be more expensive today. But back then in Star Trek, it was really sick seeing them. Although it did get pretty cheap it's somewhere in mid-2014 and just somebody just fucking texted me. Oh no, it was TikTok notification. Uh, fuck TikTok, dude. China, stop stealing my data, man. Um, but yeah, blood in the water, very good. And now finally, lastly, the knife. Oh man, back in 2013, I didn't even really know how to get a knife. I saw some people with knives in game, I was like, wait, what, how, how did you get that? And apparently it was the rare special item from the cases. I found that out only a few months into the update being out. But yeah, when you're talking about 2013 knives, the first finishes, you might be thinking about Full blue case hardened Karambit, or maybe Bayonet Slaughter, or maybe M9 Crimson Web. But no, th this was the knife of the year, and it was the Statrak Karambit Fade, baby. Oh yeah! This was the absolute endgame knife for any CSGO player, including me. I even renamed my default knife to this at some point. It's an absolute icon of an item which nowadays has kind of been forgotten and taken over by some of the new knife finishes, but this Loki is still my dream knife to have and... And you believe me, one day I'll make a video of me trading for this knife, alright? So, hey. Um, yeah, it's a sick knife. I absolutely love it. Anyways, I had a lot of fun making this video and I know some people might disagree with some of the picks I did, but it's all opinion based and out of my memory I had from that year, like how many people had that skin or whatever and which one was the most expensive one. And as I promised at the start of the video, we're gonna be giving away this M4A4 Evil Damio in factory new condition. And the rules are really simple. All you have to do to win this giveaway is subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment your trade link in the comments below. And yeah, good luck to everyone. And also in the previous loadout video I did, we also had a giveaway, so let's see who's gonna be the winner. We had a lot of unique comments, and the winner is... Uh, me! Let's fucking go, boys! We did it! Easy clap! No, I'm just kidding, we're gonna reroll, alright? Let's see who's gonna be the next winner here. And it is gonna be... Zvikli Graz. Congratulations! Nope! He didn't subscribe, boys. The rules are simple. All you had to do is subscribe, like the video, and comment your trade link. And he failed to do it, so we're gonna re-roll. And the next winner is gonna be... Let's see... Semi9877. There we go. He hates the Medusa as well. Respect, respect. You are the winner. Congratulations to you. As you can see, he has a pretty nice inventory of him himself there as well. So, hey, he's all good, legit. Uh, the 5 7 is sent, and yeah, enjoy. And also, for this video's giveaway, don't spam your trade link. Like, I can see in the comments that there's some people that spam their trade link like 10 times. You're not gonna win. I'm just gonna disqualify you from the giveaway, and you're just waiting, wasting your own chance. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video. Later!